title of today's sermon is called How to Make Sound Judgments. Today we're going to share with you from Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Let's all read it together in one voice. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. Let's begin. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, when you can see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. I want to start off by sharing with you a, a story, a, just a funny, comical story. Uh, it's a story about a woman. She was uh, waiting for her flight, and she was sitting in an airport terminal. And while she was waiting, she decided, you know what, I am hungry. And before she sat, she bought a package of cookies. And she sat down, and... She opened up a newspaper and she began to read her the newspaper. And all of a sudden she noticed this man sitting next to her was eating a cookie. So she thought to herself, hmm. And so she glanced over and she noticed it was the very same cookie that she had bought. And she thought to herself, okay, maybe he made a mistake and... And uh, maybe, you know, it was a one-time thing. But, you know, she was bothered by it, but she decided, okay, I'm going to just uh, let him know that this is my cookie and that he shouldn't should, he should eat it. So she reached over and grabbed the cookie, and she began to eat it. But then a few moments later, she became very irritated because the man grabbed another cookie that belonged to her, and he began eating that cookie. And she's like, what is this man doing? So she grabbed another one she ate just to let him know, hey, this is my cookie, and I'm not going to let you eat all of my cookie. And then this was the breaking point. This man then grabbed another cookie and ate it. And she goes, okay, this is it. So she grabbed as much as she could, except, you know, so there was one left, and she grabbed everything else, and she just ate them all. I said, okay, now this will show him not to mess with me and steal my cookie. And then even to her amazement, after doing all of those things, this man grabbed the last piece of cookie and was about to eat it. But then at the last moment, he decided to break that in half and gave it to her. At this point, she was furious. How dare, she, dare this person eat all my cookie? And the last piece of cookie, he decides to eat half of it. So she just started, you know what? You know, she was so just fed up with it, she grabbed, snatched the cookie out of his hand, grabbed the empty bag, and decided to put it in her purse. And as she was putting the, the empty bag and the half, cookie, half a cookie remaining, as she was putting that in her purse, she noticed in her purse was the bag of cookie that she had bought earlier. All this time, she realized that he wasn't the one eating her cookie. She was the one eating his cookie. Now, I'm not, I wasn't, I've never been in her situation, but I can assume, safely assume, that she probably wished that she could have gone back in time and maybe taken her time, you know, before passing judgment upon this man. One of the most maligned and misused word uh, misquoted word among Christians and non-Christians alike is the word judgment. So many times I've heard in the past where people say whenever a Christian would say something, maybe remotely something negative, people would look, respond by saying, hey, don't judge me. Don't pass judgment. Bible teaches us not to pass judgment. Bible teaches us not to judge. You know, whenever people say stuff like that, my response to this, you know, this type of statement is, is that really true? Does the Bible really tell us not to judge? Does the Bible really tell us that we should not judge others? 
The answer is no. Bible doesn't say those things. And people that say that, they're kind of taking the Bible out of context and they're just quoting from one verse. Because when we study the Bible, Bible tells us to make judgments. And when we examine our lives, there's not a single person in this world who do not judge. And for us to say that you should not judge, Bible should say you should not judge, that's just a really uh, incorrect and illogical statement. For instance, when you're walking down maybe late at night, 2 o'clock in the evening, you're walking down the street and, to, and, and you see these two big, you know, rough-looking men come out of the dark alley and invite you, hey, you want to come inside the alley? I want to sell you some Mary Kay cosmetics. What are you going to say? Are you going to say, oh, really? 2 o'clock in the morning? You two, you know, really dirty, you know, hairy-looking men, you want to sell cosmetics to me? Okay, I'll go. There's no one in this room that will, you know, make that type of judgment. Or are you going to fault them for making that kind of judgment, saying, ah, you're being judgmental, you're thinking that these men are evil, you don't even know them, uh, don't, don't judge people like that. There's not a single person in this world that will criticize you or I for making that type of judgment. What if somebody calls you over the phone? Actually, I've had this situation. What if somebody calls you over the phone and says, oh, I'm saying, hi. And I just, believe it or not, I had this phone call three times within the past months. And the most recent phone call said, oh, congratulations. We did a random selection of numbers, and the last four digits of your number, 0171, you have been selected to win this special prize. So if you give me some of your personal information, and I just, at that point, I said, thank you, and I hung up on them. Will you accuse me of being judgmental? Will you accuse me of saying, hey, you shouldn't do that. That person might be telling the truth. No, why are you passing judgment? Why are you not trusting them? You should have given them your name, your, your social security number, and your bank account number. For not doing that, you are being very judgmental. There's not a single person in this room that would accuse me of being judgmental. And yet, Many people in this world, whenever we say something critical or negative, people accuse us, you're judging me, don't judge me, you should not be judgmental. As if that's exactly what the Bible teaches us. When in fact, Bible does just the opposite. In fact, Bible teaches us, Bible commands us that we should judge. Bible tells us that we should, make, we should judge between truth and lies. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, it says, Let God's curse fall on anyone, including us, or even an angel from heaven, who preaches a different kind of good news than the one we preach to you. I say again, what have we said before? If anyone preaches any other good news than the one you welcome, let that person be cursed. What is, what is, it, what is, talking about, what is Paul talking about here? Paul, Paul is saying that we need to make correct judgment between what is, what is the truth and what is a lie? The Bible tells us we need to make correct judgments based on what is, what is truth and what is a lie. Second, the Bible tells us that we need to make right judgment on what is evil and who do evil acts. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. The Bible tells us that we need to make right judgment when it comes to what is good and also what is evil. The reality is this. We live in a world filled with evil. And if we do not make right judgments, but we're going to live in, and we're going to suffer and we're going to live in great amount of pain and suffering. Do we not teach our children when a, when, a, when a stranger comes to you and offers you a candy and invites you to go somewhere, do we not teach our children, you shouldn't do that. Do not follow strangers. What are we doing? We are teaching our children to make right judgments, to discern what is good and what is evil. And Bible does that also. And lastly, Bible tells us that we need to make right judgments. We need to judge. We need to judge who is really godly and who isn't. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Dear friends, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must test them to see if the spirit they have come spirit they have comes from God. For there are many false prophets in this world. The Bible teaches us that we need to have a discerning heart when it comes to judging people as to who is spiritual 
and who is not. The reality is this. Just because people go to church does not mean they are spiritual, does not mean they are mature in God. And Bible commands us that we need to discern, we need to make right judgment as to who is really mature and who is not. One of the first things that I was taught uh, when I was at seminary, trained, uh, trained, to, trained to be a pastor, was that they've always taught me that, you know, be careful not to put young Christians and new Christians in a position of great responsibility. Now, when I'm doing that, am I being judgmental towards that person? The answer is, of course not. I'm not. I'm just being wise. I'm just using sound judgment. You see, Bible never tells us that we should not judge. What the Bible does tell us is that we need to make good and right judgments. So then, what is a good judgment? What is a right judgment? Today, I want to share with you three examples that Bible gives us about making good and right judgments. Number one, the Bible teaches us that right judgment is made when we do not make quick judgments. The Bible tells us that we're making right judgments when we do not make quick judgments. In James chapter 1, verse 19, it says, You must all be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry. What is it saying here? What is it, what is it saying? It's saying, you know what, when we get angry, what are we doing? We're making quick decisions. We're making quick judgments. And Bible tells us that those are the things that we should not do. Bible tells us that, you know what, before we speak, before we make judgments, listen. Listen carefully and take your time. When we make quick judgments, we tend to make irrational judgments. When we make quick judgments, we tend to make bad judgments. When I was in America, we used to, uh, every year at our church, we used to have a basketball tournament. And uh, one of my faithful leaders, his name was Eugene. Believe it or not, Eugene, his name was Eugene. And uh, he's a uh, great man, smart guy, works for uh, Exxon Mobil, um, very faithful, one of the Sunday school teachers, uh, shepherd, just uh, really a great leader. And he also loves to organize events. So whenever we had a basketball tournament, he would always volunteer. Pastor Paul, I would love to help out. And for me, I said, wonderful. Not only would he organize the tournament, he would also referee the tournament. But I remember this during one tournament. Eugene became really irate. He, be, he lost his temper. He lost his control. Because while he was refereeing the tournament, he, would, he overheard some of the students using bad language. And he just couldn't stand it. You know, he just, after hearing that for a few moments, he lost it. And he just started, you know, yelling at the students and, you know, screaming at them. And then, you know, I came in and then, you know, he made an even bigger mistake. He turned around, he looked at me and he started screaming at me. He wasn't really yelling at me, but he was yelling and screaming towards me, you know. And then after about, you know, about five, ten minutes, after, you know, calming him down, you know, everything went back to normal. And then the, after the tournament, some of the other church members came to me. Even the other church, you know, some church members from another church came to me and said, excuse me, you know, so what did you think about this? I'm like, ah, you know, he just, you know, he's a good guy, but he just lost his temper. And they're like, yeah, so what do you think about him? You know, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about this? And I'm like, what do you mean, what do I think about him? And what do you mean, what am I going to do about this? And they said, you know, he yelled at you. He screamed at you. I said, yeah. And my response to them was that, but you see, the Eugene that I know is not the Eugene that you saw today. I told them that Eugene that I know has been one of the most submissive, supportive, faithful worker that I've ever had in my life. Eugene that I know is one of the most giving and generous person that I know. The Eugene that I know, not that Eugene, he's nodding his head, but Eugene that I know is one of the most kindest, gentlest person that I know. And I told him, what he did today, he made a mistake. I'm not going to judge him. I'm not going to pass judgment upon him based upon this one act of mistake that he made. Because the Eugene that I know is far better than that. 
You see, too often in our lives, we are so quick to pass judgment. We make judgment, we pass judgment upon one single act. We pass judgment upon one single mistake. If we make quick judgments about people, we usually, we're usually making judgment based upon few events rather than the entire life. If married people were to make same kind of quick judgments, I would guarantee you there would not be a single married couple left in this world. Because every, every married couple, we get into an argument and we get into a fight. And I guarantee you, in that moment of argument, in that moment of you know, heated exchanges, guess what? <laughs> we don't want to live with them. We want to be as far apart from them as possible. And for many of us, sometimes we even contemplate at that moment, even divorce. But then, a few hours pass, a few days go by, and then the calm comes over you, and then you start to think a little bit more rationally. And then you realize that that argument is really an isolated incident. And then you start judging your spouse, not based upon that one argument, but you start judging your spouse based upon his or her life. And I am so thankful that my wife does not make quick judgments because my wife always tells me, you know, honey, you're, you know, except for the big bad temper that you have, you know, you're a good father and a good husband. And I'm so thankful that she is wise enough to judge me based upon my entire life and not just based upon few mistakes that I've made. You see, Bible doesn't tell us that we shouldn't judge others. What the Bible tell, does tell us is that we are to make good judgments, right judgments. And making that right judgment means we do not make quick judgments. And the second thing, second way, second thing that is mentioned here about making the right judgment is, is that when we judge people, we need to judge people based upon what is on the inside and not based upon what is on the outside. In John chapter 7, verse 24, it says, Stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. Simply put, what God is telling us is this. You, we need to judge people based upon a person's character, their integrity, their faithfulness, and their humility. All of those things are not just appearances, but all of those things are characteristics of what is inside. And God is telling us when we judge people, in order for us to judge people correctly, we must look at the, you know, who they are inside, their character. Are they honest? Are they hardworking? Judge them based upon um, their in, uh, integrity, character, faithfulness. Do they keep their word, their humility? Do they really, are they servant? Do they serve other people? And don't judge people based upon their height, their looks, and more importantly, not based upon their wealth or position. And I'll be very honest with you. I hate to say stuff like this, but I have a very difficult time with people who look down on others simply because of their position. I really do not enjoy being around people who think that they're better and more important because they have more money, because they, are not, they have a high position, or maybe they're because of their powerful position. It tells me that these people pass judgment and they judge people based upon appearances. It also tells me that these people are full of uh, sin of pride and arrogance. And when we judge people, we should not make that mistake as well. You know, at All Nations Community Fellowship, there are many people here that I have so much respect for and it's the same reason that, it, that I just mentioned. There's so many of us in here. Out in the outside world, they have dozens of people that work, on, that work for them, that work underneath them. And yet, when they're here, when they're around other people, they're constantly serving, they're constantly giving. And they don't look at people and say, you know what, you know, are, are you more educated? Are you more educated than I am? Are you younger than me? Are you older than me? Are you in a higher position than me? Am I, are you better looking than me? None of these, you know, they do none of these things. They simply, with humble heart, they serve. Making right judgment means to judge people based on 
what is on the inside, not what is on the outside. I don't like young people when they always say, you know, especially in high school. They go to high school and guess what? The pretty people, they're the ones that are always popular and they want to be around. The most athletic ones, they're the most popular and they want to be around. You know, those are the people I don't like. Why? They're just judging people based upon outer appearances. I like people that judge people that like someone because of their heart, because of who they are. Making right judgment means judging people based upon what is on the inside, like character, integrity, faithfulness, and humility. And lastly, making right judgment means having the ability to right oneself before judging others. The right, making right judgment means having the ability to judge oneself before judging others. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6 through 8, it says, And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, Let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? The Bible calls them hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Many people use, actually use this passage to say, see, Bible tells you, you should not judge. Don't judge me, don't judge me. Well, this is not what the Bible is saying. When we look at the entire Bible in its context, we know that Bible, God tells us that we ought to judge. And what this passage is telling us is this, that in order for us to make right judgment, we must first Make judgment upon ourselves. Look at our own lives. Look at our own sin before we look at other people's needs and other people's faults and other people's mistakes. It says, why try to remove a speck, a little particle in someone's own eye when you have to deal with a big log, you know, big plank of eye in your own eye? In other words, when you pass judgment, when you judge others, we ought to do them in light of our own judgment. Let me say it again. Let me say it in a, a better way. When we are judging people, how are we judging others? Are we judging people with anger? Are we judging people with pride? Are we judging people uh, with critical eye? You see, when we judge people in light of our own sin, in light of our own mistakes, in light of our own uh, faults, you know, it's hard to judge people with a critical, critical eye. You see, when God judged us, how did God judge us? God didn't look and say, look at him. Look at Ilbin. Look at Luke. Look at all the bad things that they have done. I'm going to judge them. I'm going to strike them with a lightning bolt, and I'm going to send them to hell. You know, God, thank God God didn't judge us in that way. In fact, when God judged us, he judged us with a compassionate heart and with a compassionate eye. And that's why God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place. Because when he saw our sins, when he saw our mistakes, instead of judging us with a condemning heart, he judged us with love and compassion. You know, there are a lot of students here. And I've worked with students in America. I've worked with you guys here for about a year. And let me tell you, and I hope you guys know this too, you know, working with students is not easy. You know why? Because many times you think that you know more than me. Many times you think uh, you can do better than me. <laughs> many times you think that uh, you're more important than me. And as a leader, as an adult, and as a pastor, I'm like, man, these little punks... <laughs> I think that sometimes it's not easy. But you know what I usually say to myself? You know what I remind myself whenever I feel that way? I say to myself, you know, how was I when I was their age? What was I like when I was their age? And let me just tell you, you guys are a saint compared to, you know, who I was back then. 
And I look back and I realize that, you know, you guys are really, and I mean this, all of you are really wonderful kids. But you're kids. And for your age, you try. And you're good kids. And when I remind myself of how I used to be, and when I see, you know, how you are, even though when you do certain things that gets me real, you know, a little bit upset and so forth, guess what? I tell myself, you know what? I need to be more patient. I need to be more understanding. And in the end, you know what? You're not so bad. You see, that's what happens when we pass judgment in light of our own sin and of our, in our own mistake. We tend to be more compassionate, more understanding. Even dealing with our spouses. Whenever we fight, whenever I fight with my wife and so forth, I get so angry. I tell my wife, man, I can't believe, I can't believe she talked back to me. I'm glad my wife isn't here right now. But, but then a day goes by and I remind myself, I cannot believe I'm upset because my wife yelled at me. Because of all the times that I yelled at her, <laughs> my goodness, she is a saint compared to me. And when I compare her sin in light of my own sin, I become more understanding, more patient. And this is what God is saying. Before you try to remove a speck in someone else's eye, before you pass judgment on, on their mistakes and what they have done wrong, Think about your sins and your mistakes and what you've done wrong. You see, when we judge people in the light of our own sin, we become less critical. When we judge people in the light of our own sin and mistakes, we show more grace. And when we judge people in the light of our own sin and mistakes and faults, we, are, we tend to be more patient. So next time when somebody does something, certain things to get you angry, next time certain when some, you know, they do certain things that really get you mad, you know, tell yourself these things. First of all, tell yourself, you know what? You know, everybody has a right to have a bad day. You know, they did something today. But you know what? Everybody has a right to have a bad day. And I'm not going to judge that person based upon what the mistake that they made. I'm going to judge them based upon their life. The next time someone yells at you, next time your husband or wife gets angry and so forth, you know, next time your husband, you know, doesn't help you with certain things, and next time, you know, your wife maybe didn't clean the house as well as she should, you know, instead of getting angry, you could, but tell yourself, you know what, how many times did I clean the house? You know, how many, how, how many times or how often, you know, Am I 100% faithful whenever my husband or wife ask me to do certain things? And again, when we remind ourselves of those things, then you know what? When we judge our spouse, we tend to be less critical and more understanding. But again, as we talk about making right judgments, and I want to close by reminding you about the type of judgment God made upon us in our lives. From heaven, when God looked, up, looked down on us. And I'm so thankful that God didn't judge us based upon all of our sin. I remember for 21 years, I rebelled against God. For 21 years, I denied his lordship in my life. For 21 years, I lived my life as if he did not exist. For 21 years, I lived my life going against every every one of his principles. And for the remaining 20 years of my life, I've fallen, I stumbled, I rejected him at times. But yet when God judged us, he didn't judge us based upon my sins, but he judged us with a compassionate eye and a loving heart. That's why God sent his son to die for our sins. So next time when someone does something to make you angry, next time one of your family members 
does some certain things to really irritate you, let's always remember to make right judgments. Amen? Let us pray.